Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the Jan 2009 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Okay, so before we get into the question, just a bit of a disclaimer. The topic in this question is incomplete records. Now, this was removed from the CSEC PUA syllabus for first testing in 2019. So it was taken off in about 2017 thereabouts, right? So I still wanted to do the solution because I think that there are important techniques in going through the question and reading through the information and seeing how we can use opening and closing balances to find income statement figures. So that's why that's primarily why I'm doing the question. Also, there are students who do syllabuses other than CSEC POA who watch my videos who do have to do incomplete records. So I'm doing this for them as well. And of course, just a little OCD in me, I didn't really want to do the solutions to a paper and leave out any of the questions unnecessarily. Anyway, guys, with all that said, let's get into the question. Alrighty, so they're telling us that L. Marcus is a grocer who has not kept proper books of accounts. His accountant has found the following details of transactions for the business for the year and the December 31st, 2008. Okay, so they give us some more information here. So the first thing they tell us is all sales were made on a credit sales basis. His cash book shows that $75,000 was received from persons to whom goods have been sold. Okay, so this $75,000 is like receipts from debtors. So we might need to use that to figure out the, what you call it, the sales figure. Okay, let's take a look at the second piece of information. So they're telling us the amount paid to suppliers during the year was $53,000. Okay, so that's payments to creditors. So we'll probably need to use that to figure out purchases. Next item up, his bank account showed the following expenses paid by check. Rent five thousand, general expenses forty eight hundred, and wages ten thousand five hundred. Okay. Item four reads: the only fixed asset, non-current asset of the business, was office furniture valued on Jan one two thousand eight at twenty five hundred. This is to be depreciated at ten percent per annum. Okay. Now we have another set of information down here. We have opening and closing balances for debtors, creditors, for goods inventories we have rent prepaid bank and cash so the opening balances are here under the jan 1st 2008 column and the closing balances are under the december 31st 2008 column now let's see what they want us to do first up in part a they are asking us to prepare l marcus's statement of affairs as at jan 1st 2008 for six months a statement of affairs is essentially a capital calculation like a scaled down balance sheet as capital sorry is equal to assets minus liabilities so that's exactly what we're going to do. And they said at Jan 1st, 2008. So we are going to be using this information here. Now there's actually something missing from that batch, which I'll talk about shortly. But first, let's head up our statement. So name of the entity, L. Marcus, name of the statement, statement of affairs, and the date to which it applies as at Jan 1st, 2008. So like I was saying, we are doing just basically assets minus liabilities. There's no specific order in which you have to list these things. You can go with order of permanence or order of liquidity if you so desire. So I like to go with order of permanence, which means longer lasting or non-current assets listed first. So the only non-current asset that was in the business was this uh, office furniture valued at $2,500. Okay, so we're gonna put that first. Now we're gonna go back down to the other information. So we have debtors as an asset, inventories, rent prepaid will be an asset, but there's no balance at Jan 1st, 2008 for that. Bank and cash both have balances as well. So we're going to plug in the inventories of 98.55. Then we're going to go for the debtors, 1500. Then we're going to go for bank, 12,005 and cash, 600, totaling 26,955 for assets. Now for liabilities, there was only one liability, which was creditors for goods. Right, so let's put that in as well, and we're going to subtract that from the asset figure to give us capital at well, it should say capital at one Jan two thousand eight. Sorry, okay, there you go, of twenty four thousand five hundred and fifty five. Okay, so that's it for part A. Part B wants us to do a couple of things. Let's take a look. Okay, so part B says calculate by means of statements or accounts purchases for the year and sales for the year. Okay, so we're going to need some information from our list of balances here. We have the opening and closing balances for debtors and for creditors. So let's do the purchases first, right? So we're going to go into the creditors control account. So this is like a mini control account with just a few uh, key items in order to help us calculate purchases. So of course, creditors is a liability. The opening balance of 2400 will be brought down on the debit side. 
the closing balance of 6,500 would of course be brought down on the credit side again at the after the account was balanced off. But prior to being brought down on the credit side, you have to be carried down from the debit side. So to be brought down here, you have to be carried down from that side. Now there's only one other item that they gave us, which was on top here, item two, the amount paid to suppliers during the year was 53,000. Suppliers meaning your creditors for, for goods. So we're gonna put that on the debit side here because remember, if you pay your creditors, you are reducing your liability. To reduce a liability, you have to debit the liability account. So that's why we're debiting the creditors control account here. And the you see in cash book in details, when we make a payment out of the cash book, our cash or bank, they're decreasing. They're both assets. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you'll credit cash book and debit the creditors control account. So you see that here. Now, of course, there's a missing figure. That's the purchases for the year. How do we calculate that? You balance off the account. But you must be saying, Chris, but we already have the balance there. Yes, you do, but you're still missing a figure. So you still have to balance off the account to find it. How do we balance off an account? You add up the items on the debit side, 59,005, and you add up, well, if there were more, if there were multiple items on the credit side, you'd add them all up, but here we only have one item. So you'll take your total from this side, subtract that item, and that will give us the purchases for the year. Of course, now, if you were to add going down on both sides, you get the same total of 59,500. So our purchases figure is 57,100. Let's now take a look at the debtor's control account. So the balances, let's take a look at those balances again. Right, opening balance is 1,500, closing balance is 19. So debtors is an asset. Assets have debit balances at start. So you're gonna put the 1,500 at start on the debit side, and the closing balance will also be brought down on the debit side after you balance off the account for the period. And to be brought down on the debit side, you have to first be carried down from the credit side. So you're gonna see that item here. Now, the only other item that they gave us in the question with respect to the debtors was an item one where they said all sales were made on a credit basis, but his cash book shows that 75,000 was received from persons to whom goods have been sold. So 75,000 is the receipts from your debtors, and that's going to go on the credit side of the account. Why on the credit side? Firstly, if your debtors pay you back, they reduce the amount of money they owe you. Debtors is an asset. If your asset is reduced, being reduced or decreasing, you have to credit the asset account. Also, in the cash book, when you receive money, you're going to debit because, again, if you receive money, your money is going up. Money being cash or bank is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So you'll debit cash book and you'll credit the debtor's control account. Now, the missing figure, just like up in the creditor's control account, um, where we had purchases, here, it'll be sales. To find that out, all we have to do is balance off the account. So you're going to add up the items on the, on the credit side, sorry, that's going to give us 76.9, and you're going to minus the 1,500 here. So I think that's going to give us 75.4. Let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. Of course, now when you add up both columns, you're going to get the same total of 76.9. So our sales figure is 75,400. Okay, that's it for part B. Let's take a look at part C. All righty, so part C asks us to prepare L Marcus's trading and profit and loss account. Income statement for the year ending December 31st to 8th. So, of course, again, it's an older paper, Jan 09, so they weren't yet using the terminology we currently use, being income statement and statement of financial position and these things. You'll also see the words debtors and creditors used more often than you will see accounts receivable and accounts payable. Anyhow, so again, usual stuff, you're going to draw up or head up properly your statement. Name of the entity, L. Marcus, name of the statement, income statement and the period to which it applies. FYE means for the year ended and 31st December 2008. The first figure we're going to put in there is the sales figure we just calculated of 75,400. Right? There was no returns in words, so we could go straight to less cost of goods sold. Now, we're going to go back to our list of balances at start and balances at end and look for the inventory. So inventory at start is 98.55, so that's open in stock. We're going to put that there. Next, we add purchases. And remember, we found that uh, back in B part one in the creditors control account and that figure was 57,100. Now we're going to add those two items together to get the cost of goods available for sale and from that we're going to subtract the closing stock. Now closing stock according to this was $11,249. So when that's taken away from the cost of goods available we get cost of goods sold in this case being 55,706. We're subtracting that from the sales figure to get gross profit of 19,694. Now, there were no other revenues, so we could go straight to less expenses. Now, we had item three, which gave us expenses, right? So we had rent, 5,000, general expenses, 4,800, 
and wages 10,005. Now with the rent, there was a balance down in the balances section, right? A closing prepayment. So we know what we do with prepaid balances at end. We subtract them, right? So we're going to subtract the 1250 from the 5000 and we're going to get, well, that shouldn't be 3650. That should be 3750. What's going on there? All right, let's fix that. Lovely. Now, the next item, again, back in item, item three, we had general expenses, 4800 So we're going to put that there as well. Then we had the wages, 10005 And don't forget in item four, they told us about the depreciation, 10% of the value of the asset of 2500 10% of 2500 is 250 So we're going to include that. We're going to subtotal everything there, giving us 19003 And when we subtract that from the gross profit of 19694 we're going to be left with a very small net profit of $394. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question 3 from the Jan 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.